So I'm going to talk about, is there such a thing as um, culture negative sepsis in the newborn or is it just in our mind? Before I do that, uh, at this stage, most, uh, most people say, uh, declare if they have anything to declare. I have nothing to declare, but I want to declare the following. I firmly believe that all of us must limit the use of antibiotics. All of us should provide the most appropriate antibiotic cover to a baby with proven or suspected sepsis. And this was a whole chart was given by Junaid in his presentation. All of us should minimize the duration of antibiotic therapy. All of us must practice and institute antibiotic stewardship and quality improvement in our units. Now, before I talk about uh, culture negative sepsis, I think it's uh, the beginning of wisdom is calling things by their right name. So, Sivoli and Bright have defined culture negative sepsis as a combination of clinical signs suggesting sepsis with or without inflammatory markers, sterile blood culture, that is negative blood culture, and a clinical team's decision to administer antibiotics. So it is a combination of both clinical signs and symptoms with or without any uh, laboratory support, but culture negative, and a clinician's decision to treat or not to treat. Now this definition uh, has been questioned particularly from the Texas group of Dr. Canty, Joseph Canty and colleagues. And they have suggested that although many studies refer to the concept of culture negative sepsis, there is uncertainty regarding this entity, whether it actually exists. So they question whether there is anything like culture negative sepsis at all, or if it is present, whether it is due to infection or not. So that is the current situation which I want to clarify and describe. Now, Dr. Canty and his team have published a couple of articles with these headlines or, or, or headings. We should end the culture of culture negative sepsis in neonatology, neonatal intensive care unit. They have stated that there is no such a thing as culture negative sepsis. And then they have also stated in another article, prolonged antibiotic therapy for culture negative sepsis in preterm infant, it is time to stop. Well, the above papers, and I've read all of them, they need clarification. I'm not quite sure if Dr. Canty's group is suggesting that there is no such thing as culture negative sepsis. If they're suggesting that, then Humbly, I, and, and I will show you in my presentation, many neonatologists would not agree with that statement. But if they are suggesting that prolonged antibiotic therapy in culture negative sepsis should not be given, that we will fully endorse. And I am absolutely sure that that is the correct statement that prolonged antibiotic therapy should not be given, whether it is culture positive or culture negative uh, sepsis. Now, the reason why this dichotomy has occurred, I think in my own mind, is that because there is a huge difference where actually seps neonatal sepsis occurs and where uh, research takes place. As you can see in the top of the slide, there is a 20 uh, times fold difference between uh, sepsis, whether it's early onset sepsis or late onset sepsis in the uh, high income countries and in the versus the low income countries. The mortality is much higher, the incidence is much higher. About 250,000 babies die every year from neonatal sepsis in low income countries. But research on in, in, in sepsis actually takes place in these ivory towers of North America and Europe. Clinicians, uh, geriatric clinicians like myself, have long realized that bandagi humne chhod di hai for us. Kya karein log jab khuda ho jaye? So we we take a much more realistic view of what uh, is um, uh, what comes from the West, and we should perhaps pay attention to what we do ourselves. <clears throat> 
So I take you back to the history of uh, cultural negative sepsis and, and, and gradually bring you up to date. We go back to mid 80s, 84, 85, when I was uh, at Sick Kids in Toronto. Uh, and at that time, it was possible to do autopsies on babies who died in neonatal intensive care. And in fact, 68% of all babies who died in neonatal intensive care at Sick Kids had an autopsy. So we analyzed 338 autopsies looking for discordance, that is, the difference between what was clinically diagnosed and put on the death certificate and what was found on uh, autopsy. And we divided them into three classes. Class one, where there was a major difference between the clinical diagnosis and autopsy diagnosis. And we looked at many variables, but I've just put down here infection. There was 4% of autopsies in which we found infection was the cause of death but clinically the cultures had been negative and the clinicians had stopped antibiotics. About 1% there was infection, but it wouldn't have made much difference because there were other things wrong with the baby too. And so overall, there was a 3.6% or 4% difference between clinical diagnosis of um, uh, sepsis versus autopsy diagnosis. So one of the conclusions in our study was that inability to isolate microbial pathogens on culture does not exclude sepsis. That is, just because your culture is negative, uh, it does not mean that the baby does not have sepsis. So that was our, in the 80s, which we described uh, about 30 years ago. More recently, Barbara Stoll and uh, uh, James Wynn, colleagues of ours, in, looked at and analyzed the data for neonatal research networks in the United States. And they write that although 50% of very low birth weight infants were treated with five or more days of antibiotics, only 1.9 had culture proven infection. The vast majority, 39% of these cases were diagnosed on clinical grounds alone in absence of positive culture. The labels were various labels were put of probable or possible or presumed diagnosis, all meaning the same as culture negative sepsis. And this reminds me of the saying of William, Wors Wors uh, William Shakespeare, what is in a name that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet as any other rose. So this, this disparity between uh, actual clinical diagnosis of culture proven sepsis being only 2%, whereas 39 to 40% of babies being treated with antibiotics indicate the clinical uncertainty of diagnosis and worry of the clinicians about false negative blood cultures. More recently, last, uh, last uh, 2019, uh, Rachel Greenberg, also looked at about uh, uh, 12, uh, 13 uh, uh, neonatal units, 14,000 infants between 22 and 28 weeks. And you will see that she concluded that the percentage of uh, infants given antibiotic ranged from 30% to 69%. So there's a huge variation even in the United States where people sometimes in their unit, they, they think that they are representing the whole of United States. That is far from truth. And the rates of more than five days of antibiotic administration was 10 to 100 fold higher for culture negative than culture positive infection, early onset sepsis. Therefore, what we are suggesting that clinicians are worried about uh, uh, sepsis, and they, uh, even if the cultures are negative, because of the clinical condition of the babies, they can and they continue to worry and give antibiotics. And it has no relationship with the actual early onset sepsis in various units. For example, this unit, which had only 0.3% of early onset sepsis in their unit, was giving antibiotic to 58% of their babies. Whilst this unit, which had the, one of the highest rates of uh, early onset sepsis uh, of 2.9%, gave antibiotic to 42% of babies. So what she con Rachel concluded is that in cohort, simply being born uh, at one academic center instead of another uh, 
could increase an infant's odd of receiving more than five days of antibiotics sevenfold, even after adjustment for demographic and clinical factors. So if you traverse through the neonatal unit of the uh, United States, you, a baby might get uh, a, a antibiotics for culture negative sepsis in one unit, but not in another. And in one unit may be only 48 hours and another more than five days. So there is a huge variation of, by clinicians. More recently last year, uh, Mukapade from Pennsylvania uh, also looked at uh, 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 24 neonatal units in the United States. Between 22 and 26 weeks of gestation, that, and what he looked at, what were culture positive infection, uh, rate of culture positive infants between eight and 37%, far more culture negative inf infants, 23 to 63%. And when you look at the results, th that is fascinating that death of course was much higher in culture proven sepsis than in culture negative sepsis. But the neurodevelopment impairment was exactly the same in culture positive and culture negative sepsis. That means there's something very similar going on. And to say that uh, whether culture negative in, uh, infection may have nothing to do with uh, infection, culture negative sepsis may have nothing to do with infection, perhaps is uh, um, not quite right as this data suggests. And of course, culture negative sepsis had more dead than controls. So what is the situation then in Europe? Is it just the American uh, way of doing things or is there any difference in Europe? This is a very large, this is a national study uh, in Norway. They looked at 168,000, uh, nearly 169,000 babies. And the incidence of culture confirmed early onset sepsis in their uh, in whole of Norway was less than 1%. And there was a nine-fold uh, diagnosis of culture negative early onset sepsis, 8.57% per thousand, per thousand. So there is a, the, the neonatologist in Norway, nine times more, uh, were more likely to diagnose culture negative sepsis than culture positive sepsis. And they gave antibiotics for seven to 10 days or uh, in culture negative five to seven days. And their definition of culture negative uh, sepsis uh, was clinical signs of infection, maximum C-reactive protein level above 30 milligram per liter, minimum duration of the clinician's decision to give antibiotic for five days or longer, and other explanations for the clinical picture were excluded. Thus, in Norway, in Norway alone, 26% of culture negative infants received median of four days of antibiotics. So at the end of this day, what is the current practice in the high income countries from where the data has come to say that the culture negative sepsis does not exist, or if it, is, if it exists, it, does, it has nothing to do with infection. In California, where I live, there are 121 uh, neonatal intensive care units. And uh, Shulman uh, only two years ago reviewed this uh, Uh, the, uh, in California, 27-fold difference in practice between uh, 100 and, uh, between uh, the 20, uh, 121 neonatal units about who to give antibiotics. Neonatologists, so in summary, the neonatologists in US and Europe are 16 times more likely to give antibiotics for five days or more for in culture negative sepsis. Survivors of neonatal sepsis, whether it's culture positive or culture negative, may suffer from short and long-term consequences. Infants who have confirmed bacterial sepsis or have culture negative sepsis, the rate of neurocognitive disability is exactly the same at 18 to 22 months. So we're talking about very similar things of culture positive and culture negative sepsis, except that in culture negative sepsis, you do not have a positive blood culture. So 
my take on this, all this reading the literature and knowing a little bit about sepsis is when different clinicians or units are doing different things for essentially the same condition, i.e. culture negative sepsis, it is impossible to claim that they are either all right or all wrong. There is something in between. And as I said in the, my earlier present, uh, presentation three weeks ago, sepsis, but in fact, culture negative sepsis remains a goragdanda or a conundrum and continues to be so even today. Let's come back to real world. Uh, let's take a case. An experienced nurse calls a resident. The nurse calls you to see a six year old boy, a baby, who was born at 35 weeks by C-section. She thinks the baby is unwell and looks septic. Other than prematurity, there is no other risk factors for infection. Mother did not get IAP for GBS. On examination, the baby is pale and quiet. Respiratory rate of 68, normal range I've given. Capillary refill time is four seconds. Heart rate is 150. Temperature is 36 blood pressure 50 over 30, uh, and that is the normal range. So what would you do? I think most residents and most people would take bloods for culture, CBC, CRP, and wonder whether we should start antibiotics. The reason I said wonder is because every one of us must debate this dilemma, whether to give antibiotics or not. If you don't give antibiotics, sepsis will may kill the patient. Or if you give antibiotics, there is harm. And the antibiotics themselves may, may cause harm. So this is something which we must ponder every time we prescribe antibiotics, whether we should be using antibiotics or not. And of course, uh, the other issue about giving antibiotics, starting antibiotics very early, is that not all babies who look septic have uh, sepsis, but we do not know that at, at the time. And every, every hour which you delay, you delay giving sepsis, the mortality increases by 4%, as Shorts has shown. And we have shown that every hour, if you delay antibiotic therapy, organ failure increases uh, in an exponential manner. And if more organs fail, you, your mortality is much likely to be higher. Therefore, there is an urgency to give antibiotics. Now, the main question about culture negative sepsis is this, that on 48 hours later, the baby still looks a little ill, it's pale, but a bit more active, still reluctant to feed. Respiratory rate has come down to 40. Capillary refill time is now three seconds. Uh, heart rate is 120, blood pressure is uh, 50 over 30, temperature 37.1. Lab results, which you rely on, Hemoglobin is 12, white cell count uh, is 12,000. Uh, uh, absolute neutrophil count is less than 3,000. IT ratio is 0.3, platelets 97. CRP is 18. Blood culture is negative and the microbiologist suggests uh, uh, that you stop antibiotics. Should you stop antibiotics or continue? If yes, then for how long? If no, then what is your plan? What would you do? What is, why are we so scared and we start antibiotic? Is it because we think that is an inf there may be an infection which the blood culture has not been able to grow or we do not trust our laboratory or it's just our excuse to continue or change antibiotics because we feel there must be sepsis somewhere. What is the situation in Pakistan? And this is where I want to bring it home to you about, gram, uh, about culture negative sepsis. We were very lucky and fortunate that we for, formed a neonatal sepsis surveillance group uh, in uh, uh, Pakistan. Uh, one unit from each province joined us uh, to do this, uh, to do this study, and there were four units, and to maintain confidentiality, units were allocated numbers rather than names, one from each province. There were three small to medium-sized units: one tertiary care university hospital unit, 
and the prospective data was collected from November 2018 to April 2019. There were uh, 1,303 admissions. There was screened for sepsis was 1,100 babies, nearly 84%. Culture proven was only 12.3% with a mortality of 28%, uh, 28%, whereas culture negative was mainly, was much more nearly three or four times uh, of culture proven sepsis was 87.6% and had a substantial mortality of 14.4%. So it isn't that the culture negative sepsis is benign, it has uh, a, a substantial cost. All units differed in their policies regarding blood culture. Three units screened babies depending on risk factors or on clinical signs and symptoms. One unit screened all babies on admission to the neonatal unit. Every baby screened for sepsis was started on ent empirical antibiotics given for 48 hours up to 10 days in some case. And, the, and some, because of the uh, numbers, the mean is around 10 days. Microbiological facilities, and this is fascinating uh, in Pakistan, it varied considerably from advanced to rudimentary. The blood culture results were available usually between 48 and 72 hours in all units, except in unit 15, where it sometimes took 10 days uh, for a blood culture to come back. And I'll be discussing that in a minute. So this is our basic data. The units, nearly most units uh, screen babies of more than half of their babies, except this is skewed a bit data because unit 12 screened every baby who was admitted to the neonatal unit, to their neonatal unit, sometimes more than once. And so the data is a bit skewed uh, because of unit 12. But on, on the mean, 84% of babies admitted to a neonatal unit in Pakistan would get screened for, uh, for uh, sepsis. The interesting data, which comes in it's very interesting, is that while 84% of babies are screened for, sepsis, uh, for uh, sepsis, uh, culture negative sepsis is 87% because the culture positive sepsis, culture rate is about 12%. And this is backed up by another study coming from Hussein et al. from Sialkot, which has shown exactly the same as our study. But I want to point out something else that in our study, in the early onset sepsis, whether uh, culture-proven sepsis and, uh, had higher uh, mortality, as I have shown you, as the American data also shows, and culture-negative sepsis uh, had much lower mortality. But for late onset sepsis, but for late onset sepsis, there was no difference no difference in mortality between uh, the uh, culture positive babies and culture negative babies. And that is a very important aspect to remember. Because whilst we can say that uh, unit 15, which had the poor, the most, least facilities for uh, microbiological screening and uh, staffing, et cetera, had the worst result, but the unit uh, 12, which had the lowest culture rates, lowest mortality, had the highest mortality of culture positive dead late onset disease. And that is an important point to remember, that if you give antibiotics, you increase the ins chances of baby getting late onset sepsis. And this has been shown by Cupola et al. Um, in a multivariable uh, analysis. And she, she found that giving more than five days of antibiotic was independently associated with composite outcome of late onset sepsis, NEC or death. And you can see that if you give antibiotics for more than five days, then your late onset sepsis rises. And this is a lesson which we also learned from unit 12 in our, uh, our uh, data. So the bottom line, and I've shown you this particular slide in my earlier presentation, is that we screen far more babies. We screen about 80% of babies. We have a slightly higher culture positive rate than what is found in the United States because of the uh, um, bacterial load perhaps in our babies. But what we do uh, is, uh, is horrendous, is that we, for every positive baby, we give a very large number of babies antibiotics. And this is something which is wrong and which we should be paying attention to. And I will be talking 
something about that in a minute. If you were to extrapolate our data uh, into Pakistan's data, they, in, in just take the premature babies, the number of ba babies born in Pakistan, number of preterm babies. If you then assume that 50% of preterm babies die, but the screening rate, of, if you take our screening rate, three, nearly 400,000 babies would be screened. And, be, and because only 47,000 would be culture positive, the babies who will receive antibiotics uh, unnecessarily or for culture negative antibiotics is, near, is nearly 300,000. So it's a huge number of, ba uh, of babies uh, who would get antib antibiotics for culture negative sepsis in Pakistan. Now we have, and others have shown, we know that if you give antibiotics, your resistance will go up and the Americans are very worried about their resistance, but we also know that uh, giving antibiotic disturbs the microbiome, gut microbiome, and that affects your immunology, that affects your neural behavior, that affects uh, your gut development. But what is much more important to remember is this, that there has been, there is evidence to show how many days of antibiotics you need to give to cause harm. If you give antibiotics for 48 hours or less, no harm has been reported. But if you give antibiotic for five to seven days, one out of 320 babies may suffer from harm. If you give antibiotic for more than seven days, the number goes down to 70. But if you give antibiotics more than 10 days, the number goes down very rapidly to about three. And interestingly, Sinai and others from India have shown that in neonatal sepsis, excluding meningitis and osteomyelitis, outcome was the same whether you gave antibiotic for seven days, 10 days, or 14 days. It makes no difference, except that the uh, harm, uh, incidence of harm goes up. Even that, that this evidence is available, the American Academy of Pediatrics still recommends antibiotics for 10 days for sepsis. And the British NICE guidelines, just like the British do sitting on the fence, they have opted for seven to 10 days of antibiotics. That, that's, that's their recommendation. About 21 years ago, 21 years ago, we studied many parameters and we showed very clearly that in sepsis, excluding meningitis and osteomyelitis, between five and seven days of antibiotics is more than enough uh, and should not be given beyond that period. This is something which is now old data, but it's now we are coming to realize again and again that prolonged antibiotics is unnecessary and should not be given. This is our protocol which we have used and which we I showed you in my last presentation. There are many other protocols like this available uh, in the literature. So what have we learned so far? We've learned that culture negative sepsis is diagnosed more frequently than culture positive sepsis all over the world, whatever anybody says. A negative culture does not mean that the baby does not have sepsis. Similarly, a positive culture does not always mean that the baby has sepsis. Use of antibiotics during the first few days of life carries a high risk of short and long-term adverse effects, NEC, uh, late onset sepsis, or obesity, asthma. And for Pakistan, our Pakistan study showed that the use of antibiotics is 73 times greater for culture negative than culture positive sepsis. This is wrong, and this must be curtailed or stopped. Our data, however, shows that there is a wide variation in facilities, practice, and processes that impact, sorry, the, sorry for the spelling, on practices and outcome. And the most important variable that has an impact on management is the quality and process of blood culture. So the dilemma for us is always there, particularly with culture negative sepsis, we will always find ourselves at crossroads between giving antibiotics and antimicrobial stewardship. So what, should we, what can we do? I will give you four simple steps which we can do to see how we can reduce the antibiotic uh, duration and how we can improve the quality of our service. 
One, you need to define for yourself more precisely what is sepsis. What does sepsis mean for you? Identify management strategy, who you're going to give antibiotics and who you're not. Improve the yield and response time of your blood culture. Establish antimicrobial stewardship. Establish your own or your group database. Carry out quality improvement programs to get meaningful and sustained quality improvement in what you do. Of course, learn from each other by sharing good practices. And I'll get just dwell uh, with each of these in uh, two slides per, per item. So the diagnosis, as I showed you in my talk three weeks ago, that the uh, definition of sepsis is not really, everyone has different definitions. I tend to use this, because, not because this definition is very diagnostic, but it has a, got a very high negative predictive value. So if, if a baby does not fit into this, then the chances of that baby having uh, uh, sepsis are less than 5%. So that's what I use, but you can use any uh, definition you want. But certainly don't use just the textbook's uh, risk factors. If you're going to use risk factors, then combine it with multiple and serial exa physical examination of the baby. And the, some of the United States guide, guidelines suggest that you should be examining the baby every 30 minutes or at least every hour. I would certainly not recommend the using of um, the scoring systems uh, which have been not validated in the developing countries. But what can be done and what you can do, is just like Husada who, who in Indonesia, what she did was to unit specific, she took these two or three units, looked at their babies with sepsis, identified their cl uh, the presenting clinical signs and symptoms, what made people think of sepsis and the laboratory, uh, laboratory parameters, and then was able to calculate the likelihood ratio you know, for each item. For example, if the baby was lethargic, then the chances in her unit, that uh, the likelihood ratio the baby had sepsis was 15.9 uh, times. So you can develop your own likelihood ratios for your own specific units. And if you use these uh, likelihood ratios for the baby which we were discussing, the baby was had pallor, poor feeding, lethargy, no IAP, so the score was very high, 36 times more likely to be infected. That's why you gave antibiotics. But now that you've given antibiotics for 48 hours, you can reduce that score. But even then, the 48 hour results showed that the baby still had 16 to 26 fold chances of having uh, anti uh, infection. And therefore, it was the answer to the, uh, at 48 hours was to continue with antibiotics for this baby. The second and the most important is to improve your diagnostic blood culture. It is always argued that if bacteria cannot grow in the broth, in the blood culture bottle, the medium, where the medium is ideal, temperature is ideal, free of antibiotics, no complements, no phagocytes to kill the bacteria. If they can't grow there, then how will they grow in the blood? So you, they are suggesting that, of course, the blood, uh, the sensitivity of a blood culture is very high, particularly if you give two mils, and it's above 90% if you give one mil of blood. I'm not quite sure which system uh, are used uh, by uh, people, even in Pakistan, using the automated system, whether they are using the pediatric bottles or they're using adult bottles, and that is a, will make a difference because blood culture volumes determines the sensitivity of your blood culture. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, but I, my, on my visits to Pakistan, I find that uh, very few people actually know what happens to their blood, uh, blood when it is sent to the lab. Now, in the automated system, I just want to say this because I'm going to make an important point here. In the automated system, the broth is there, it has a dye, it is then taken to the lab where it is put in an incubator, which shakes it, uh, um, shakes the uh, all the time so that the blood is mixed with the uh, with the broth. There is 
a light detector because once the organisms are there in the blood, they form gas, they form CO2, and they also form uh, a differential type, uh, their own um, uh, uh, thumbprint, so to speak, of gas formation. This is detected by uh, a photo detector automatically, and then it's put on a raw board where electronically the um, system tells you that there is something growing. And this gives you a result within 24 hours, the microbiologist knows that there is something growing in the blood culture. And the analysis can be given at 36 hours with over 90% certainty. Now the systems have got even better. They've included PCR, automatic PCR with the automatic, uh, automated blood culture system. And the results are now available within 12 to 24 hours in a very, very advanced units where metagenomics is incorporated in the uh, automated system, you can now get blood culture results within nine hours with 100% uh, certainty. But the real world, these systems are expensive to install, run and maintain. In Pakistan, I believe that only tertiary care uh, hospitals and some private hospitals um, have the basic automated system, not with the PCR or metagenomics. In Aga Khan, Adnan tells me it costs 2,500 rupees for a blood culture. In a private lab, I looked on the internet in Pakistan, it costs 3,500 uh, rupees for, for a blood culture. So it's expensive. But nevertheless, the automated system gives you a result within 36 hours. And Dr. Durrani, who I believe uh, uh, attending this talk, has shown in his study that it can be uh, gram negative uh, organisms can be grown even quicker. And you can get a result for gram negative infection much earlier than 20, uh, 36 hours. But if you don't grow anything in the automated system at 36 hours, it is very unlikely that you will grow anything at 48 hours. So uh, 36 hours uh, should be adequate uh, uh, to give, get you the results. And then you can decide to continue or stop the antibiotics if you're using the automated system. But ladies and gentlemen, the problem is that the blood culture um, systems used in low and medium uh, um, income countries. And in fact, to my surprise, 30, in 32% of labs in Europe, is the manual system. Now, what is the manual system? So you take blood, you put it in these blood culture bottles. The blood culture bottle may or may not have agar in it. This blood culture bottle is taken uh, and then put in an incubator. The incubators may be a very simple incubator or an incubator with agitator. That means when they shake. If they don't shake, the blood will not mix very thoroughly with, uh, with, the, uh, with the broth. 12 to 24 hours later, the technician looks at these bottles and may find this film uh, if the bacteria are growing. This is called pellicle, or they may find bubbles so that the uh, uh, gas uh, forming bacteria. They also look at turbidity of the uh, uh, broth. The broth becomes turbid if bacteria are growing. Now, this was all done electronically in the, in the um, automated system. About 12 hours later, you can see the colony is growing. Then this is plated. And another 12 hours later, uh, with a, uh, you can get the result. Now, you can see how many things can go wrong here. The blood culture, there's no shaking. The, it is in, in dependent on what the technician sees or does not see how he, he, he interprets uh, turbidity and whether he's able to pick up these colonies or not. But there are other factors which affect the manual system. And this was came as a surprise to me uh, about two months ago in the uh, World uh, Sepsis Conference, only two months ago, Professor Adelwich from Germany uh, had reviewed blood cultures in 28 centers in Europe and found that there was something what he called dead time. That means the blood, there was nothing being done to the blood culture. The blood culture was taken, it was taken before it got to the lab, there was a period of, he called dead time, 
Then it, it went to the lab before anybody looked at the positive signals in the machine. Then uh, that was a dead time. And then once it was even found in the, in the culture bottles, plating and then reporting was a dead time. And in the mean dead time in Europe in these 28 labs was between 15 to 12, uh, 12 to 15 hours. That means for 12 to 15 hours, because of staffing ratios, because of staffing numbers, they could not see and uh, do anything with blood culture. I do not know what the dead time in Pakistan is uh, for, uh, for blood cultures. The second and the most important uh, is how we take our blood cultures. Now, of course, we wash hands, we wear gloves, we clean with alcohol. How many of us wait for 30 seconds before inserting the needles before the alcohol is dry? And then something which is very important and very uh, clear, what are you using the alcohol for? You're using the alcohol for cleaning the uh, pores uh, of the skin. And if you go round and round and round and you clean the skin like this, it will not open the pores. And therefore you will, the, pore, the bacteria in the pores will remain and your contamination rates will be high. The way to do cleaning is to rub up and down, rub up and down. And that is the way you open the pores and you can clean the bacteria. Of course, you should put, uh, once you've cleaned the area, then you should not tap uh, to look at the blood, uh, where the blood vessel is. There's a normal habit of trying to see where the blood vessel is. And as I have pointed out in the past, uh, the blood culture should be taken separately with a, not in using when you're putting a line because the contamination rates are high. Something which is may or may not be practiced in Pakistan. Once you have taken the blood culture, you must wipe the top of the blood culture bottle and use a separate needle to put inoculate your blood into the blood, uh, blood culture bottle rather than the same needle which you have taken out of the skin and using. And these are little minor things, but they are extremely important in trying to get a better outcome from your blood culture. And uh, Kenneth Alexander has shown that if you use a separate prick, your contamination rate goes down considerably. The third step is, of course, using antimicrobial stewardship. The stewardship is, is a quality improvement uh, patients. It optimizes antibiotic use. These are symptoms which is uh, which are present, you can read from any uh, internet, uh, any internet uh, site. But what is very important, if you're going to use antimicrobial stewardship, you need, you need um, commitment from the leaders of the unit and the institution. There is, it is not possible to do it on your own without the support of your leaders. And in the neonatal unit, uh, this can be done uh, from uh, each uh, leader of the neonatal unit, but it must include all stakeholders uh, and so that uh, you can improve your quality. This is a uh, task and I think one of the most important things about antimicrobial stewardship is this, formulary restrictions and pre-approval. That means a junior resident or a younger resident should not be allowed to prescribe broad spectrum third, fourth generation antibiotic. They should consult the microbiologist or the senior consultant before going up, uh, escalating the antibiotic therapy. It is important also to have a clear de-escalating therapy uh, plan as Junaid suggested in his presentation uh, two weeks ago. And I think what is most important is that when you write your uh, uh, antibiotic prescription, put an end date so that it, uh, it, is, uh, it ends and you are able to review it at that time, whether to uh, continue with the antibiotic or to stop it. And the pharmacist is the person who is going to help you most in, in that area. And therefore you need the help of your pharmacist. And this is where it, you know, we have shown and others have shown where we have put into uh, um, play the automatic 48 hour stop order on antibiotic use. That is at 48 hours, the antibiotic will stop unless you have reviewed it and re-prescribed it. And you can see the, the antibiotic usage falls considerably uh, using that. So our recommendation is make it a practice to obtain 
as much blood as you can for blood culture, develop a protocol for antibiotic use according to your local data and facilities. It is impossible for anyone sitting elsewhere to give you advice of what antibiotic you should use because it depends on the, uh, your local data and the facilities you have. Consider the automatic stop rule after 36, 48 hours if the blood culture is negative and the baby is well. Review your data at the end of the year to so choose the uh, least broad spectrum antibiotic for empirical therapy in your unit and enforce restriction of prolonged antibiotic as I've shown you the data that between five and seven, giving antibiotic for more than five to seven days in uh, infection other than meningitis and osteomyelitis is not necessary. So make absolutely sure that you do not give antibiotic beyond seven uh, days or so in, in infection. Then of course, the quality improvement program, the so-called PDSA or plan to do study act uh, quality cycle. Junaid knows uh, is the world expert on this and he can give you a talk on this, but this is a very important and powerful tool to improve the quality of care which you provide and, the, and to how to reduce the Compli uh, rates of antibiotic therapy and other uh, various other parameters which you can improve in, in your uh, unit and yourself. But to do the quality imp improvement, you don't have to think very big. You can start small. For example, how can I reduce the antibiotic use in my unit? You can put a 48 hour stop rule, just that. And that will give you a review, chance to review every 48 hours so that you can stop the unnecessary antibiotics or continue if necessary. Set smart goals, goals which are achievable, which are achievable in your own unit. So use smart tools, i.e. good data, collect data, interact with the microbiologist, interact with the obstetrician. And then of course, you can test your, uh, your improvement plans with the PDSA and implement change. Remember, we have the units we have. We have the facilities we have. We can't change the facilities. We can't change the units we have. But what we can change is how we practice uh, our neonatology in our unit and how we can improve ourselves. And that is extremely important. So if I was to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, it, first conclusion is it cannot be said there is no such thing as cultural negative sepsis. It is culture negative sepsis exists and the culture, uh, culture of diagnosing culture negative sepsis in NICU is present worldwide and is unlikely to change uh, in, in the recent uh, future. Culture negative sepsis has similar mortality and morbidity as culture positive. But what is important and what we have, uh, what we want to pro propagate is the practice of giving antibiotics more than five to seven days should be stopped, whether it be culture positive or culture negative sepsis, except in meningitis and osteomyelitis. Unnecessary antibiotic increases resistance, all other defects, blood culture processes, whether you're using a manual system or an automatic system, in, improve that uh, through quality improvement program. And as I said, every unit must introduce and implement antibiotic stewardship and quality improvement program. My work, as this poet says, Mali the Kam Pani Dena, Bhagbar Mashke Pai, Malik, uh, Malik the Kam, I have done what I think should be done in a neonatal unit to, uh, to reduce the incidence of culture negative sepsis and reduce the incidence of uh, antibiotic therapy. It's up to you what you do. Thank you. And I'm ready to answer any questions. <laughs>